Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm Pastor Eddie. I really had a great uh, time answering some questions that my friend Elias uh, asked me in his interview a few days ago. And uh, we talked about ministry. We talked about Bible college. We talked about what it means to answer God's call. And um, thank you once again to him. And thank you to everyone that connected. I hope that we were able to bless and be part of um, just a little bit of what God is doing in your life. Have a blessed day and uh, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Link Up, where we link up with influential Christians that can probably contribute to your guys' life, right? So today we have Pastor Eddie, right? And Pastor Eddie, um, tell us a little bit of your work, because I know you're you were a, a pastor. Um, the 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 what did you, what did you tell me again? You were the the, the elder pastor and and the and the yes. Yeah, so I was the senior pastor in uh, Orange County in a church in Orange County down the street from Disneyland, where yeah. your uncle was uh, a member of. Um, we loved it. The, the time we spent down there was truly phenomenal. I was 28 when I took the church. Wow. Wonderful people, wonderful church. Um, so 28 and uh, my wife was 26, 20. Yeah, she's two wow. years younger than me. So we were in our late 20s, but um, we, we, we had a great time. Uh, phenomenal time um, with the church in Orange County and uh, really loved being part of the ministry. Um, now, though, um, what is a few years after that, God began to to work in our hearts and just, um, you know, we, like anybody could tell you in ministry, ministry can be difficult, um, you know, through a different perspective. Our challenge that we faced was... Um, um, my wife was faced with epilepsy for the years that we pastured and, um, we had just, we, we came to Orange County with one child and then we, we had two children afterwards. So we had, we have a total of three. It's so it's a, it's a boy and, you know, girl, then yes, a, yes. a, a boy right there. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, you know, God really blessed us, but in my wife's health was really taking a toll. Um, mm -hmm. We really couldn't, with good conscience, continue to pastor a, a really thriving church and be able to, to continue to move forward. And so we began to pray and we spoke to our church and um, we, we moved to San Jose. And um, that's where the Lord led us to. And now we are associate pastors and a church in San Jose, roughly uh, on a on a good Sunday, um, you know, we, we'll we'll have a thousand. On a bad Sunday, we'll have eight hundred. Wow! Um, so, um, you know, it's a phenomenal church. We love it. We love being part of the team. We're more busy now with everything going on uh, than we were before. Uh, so, you know, we know what it is to be senior pastors. We know what it what it is to be part of a team. Um, we just love serving God, you know, whether whatever we are doing in any capacity. So that's right. That's amazing. Yeah, I can only imagine. I mean, my, my our church, we have about like 600 to 800 people and, uh, you know, both congregations. So I can only imagine 800 to 1000 people. And, you know, with the lives that you guys do, the preachings, I understand that all those all those like lives. It's pretty difficult. Like, I know I know it's taking a toll on a lot of churches, but, I mean, we're getting through this, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Trying, but uh, so to... in San Jose, this is, this is San Jose, California, or Texas? That's correct. No, California. no, San Jose, California. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, the Bay Area. Yeah. So how is, how is uh, you know, before we continue with everything else, but how is, like, the COVID-19 situation over there and affecting the churches and whatnot? Well, you know, obviously, as many of you guys know and follow the news, um, Santa Clara specifically, is one of the counties we're in. It's the hardest hit in all of California. Oh, um, there is, there is, you know, um, obviously you can sense it when you are around town. You know, there's people still moving. Life seems fairly normal, uh, but um, you sense it more when you're in the store. And I'm sure it's the case for like everybody else. You know, right? You go into the store and you just, you just. You know, um, you got to buy groceries, you got to take care of things. And so um, I don't know. I mean, um, I call people in Orange County, uh, you know, I have family and then obviously friends in Orange County that tell me it's so it seems 
across the board, you know, there's this sense of fear and this sense of trying to stay away from from obviously getting sick and whatnot. So, I mean, that being said, the other day I went to the hospital, which is um, that specific hospital. Um, I went to take um, one of my children to get their, their shots. And so we arrived to the hospital and um, they're setting up tents in the parking lot. So most of the parking lot of this huge hospital is becoming tents for COVID-19 patients. Oh, wow. Uh, but that being said, today, um, my senior pastor published an article uh, that I believe 100, 100 and something, no more than 200 people are actually patients uh, that are being treated in the hospital with COVID-19. We're oh. talking about people with, you know, um, probably an ICU or recovering or whatever the case might be. Um, so although this is a very huge deal, it seems like, I mean, I don't know, um, it can very easily be blown out of proportion mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. Right. Um, that is not to say the seriousness of it. That, you know, obviously it's a serious thing. But but in many cases, um, you know, you especially obviously that's what the news does, right? It, it's it's there to sell, you know, their product, and so um, uh -huh. yeah. So so even though yeah, Santa Clara, where we are at, it's a very hit area. Yes, I mean it's it's you're not walking out your door, you know, and getting hit with COVID nineteen, you know. Um, that's what, which you, when we turn on the news, that's what it seems like, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, as far as our County, just speaking for our County, that's but right. you know, we're good. Um, good. thank God no one in our church has, uh, contracted it. Great. Um, we're grateful for that. We're grateful that our church is healthy, um, and just moving forward in Jesus name. So that's amazing. That's amazing. Praise God. No, I, I agree with you. Um, you know, we, I was just walking my niece the other day because whenever my niece is very, very rowdy. We take her on little walks because that's when she's tired. And then when she's on the walks, she, you know, she falls asleep in the car. And I'm, and uh, as I'm walking, you know, I see a lot of people walking around and stuff. And I kind of try to give them that like awkward smile, like, like, hey, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. And nothing, nothing. Like I look at them, like I'm gonna give them a little, you know, just some human interaction, right? Exactly. And uh, just ignore it, straight ignore me. It's I, I sense it. It's, it's a sense of fear, sense of all these different things. But you know what? Um, you know, I just know that this is gonna be. A, the beginning of the greatest revival ever witnessed, you know, Amen. out of this. So I'm, I'm excited for what's come after this virus and, you know, no, nothing's greater than Jesus at the end of the day. So I'm really, really happy. Exactly. But, um, you know, to continue, um, I wanted to see where did you come from? You know, where were you born? You know, like, you know, how was your household like growing up in the church or where did you come from? Um, born and raised in Orange County. I'm an Orange County guy. Um, wow. Yeah, born and raised there all my life. Uh, to say that um, I was a very secluded kid, uh, that doesn't mean I didn't get into trouble. Uh, I grew up in a rough neighborhood. Um, you know, people, neighbors selling drugs next door, um, you know, um, all that, you know. Yeah, so I grew up in the hood. I, yeah. If you could imagine Orange County having a hood. So, uh, so I, I loved it, but I grew up very secluded. Both parents, Catholic background. Um just like most people, you know, um, struggled in school, uh, grew up in the hood, um, you know, three families living in one home, uh -huh. uh, you know, so, so have five dogs, you know, I don't know. Yeah. If that's, you know, so, so that's kind of how I grew up. So very family oriented, uh, but, um, you know, a very broken family in the background, very, very broken family as far as you know, um, most of my siblings were, you know, gone through divorce, um, had children, um, you know, and so um, that was our background as far as as growing up. Now, when it came to meeting Jesus, I remember specifically uh, my mother used to take us to Templo Calvario in Santa Ana. <laughs> okay. And... Um, it's this large Latino Trinitarian church in, in Santa Ana, in Orange County. And I remember I used to go there and I used to sit in church service, man. I hated it. <laughs> hated it. I mean, some of those sweetest people would, would sit next to me and, you know, oh, mijo, how you doing? You know, and, 
you know, and so happy and so sweet. And I would just kind of just sit there and pout and not wanting to be there. Um, but I remember, even though, I mean, they had the, now I think about it, they had the best music, they had the best youth department. I mean, they were, you know, the lit church, the lit Latino church in the area. Mm-hmm. And they probably had, now they're, I think, one of the largest Latino churches in the West Coast. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a great church as far as administration and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I was invited by a few, few years down the road, I was invited by a friend to, to um, a Pentecostal church, United Pentecostal Church, um, in a small little building. Probably, you know, we, we were 100 people at the time, um, you know, packed out, no AC, only fans, you know, kind of thing. But to make the long story short, um, what changed my life was the day that the youth pastor, because um, I was a troublemaking kid, didn't want to listen, sat in the back, the ushers would, you know, come up to us and tell us to be quiet because we're always – playing around, you know, but one, one time the youth pastor at the time, um, she come up to me and she said, Hey, I, could you help us out? We're doing this drama. I need you to move this chair in this box on and off the stage. We're going to do this drama three, four times. And, and, you know, that's going to be your job. That changed my life. Wow. That is the day that I actually decided to, 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 um, um, follow Jesus and, <laughs> you know, go after God Amazing. because it was the first time I felt wanted by the church. Wow. So you have this, this, you know, you're a very rough upbringing kid, right? No, but you know, felt like most people, I guess, not really felt wanted or accepted, wanted or accepted, just want to be part of something. Mm-hmm. This person comes up to me, doesn't know me from anybody and says, Hey, uh, doesn't tell me, hey, you need to line up, or hey, you need to behave, or hey, you need to change, or hey, you need to do that. Just says, I need you to move a chair in a box. <laughs> That's your job. Amazing. And that was it. I was sold. I wasn't sold on the lights. I wasn't sold on the music. I wasn't. I mean, you know, I had just finished coming from a from a, one of the biggest, largest churches in our town with the best everything, but I decided to to go to this hundred member church. And they loved me and they cared for me and they discipled me. And I'm honestly here today uh, because of those initial seeds of the people that really implemented, you know, and had faith, you know, I had faith in me, had patience in me. And that really didn't let me go even through, you know, this is when I was, um, I believe, 14 years old when I started wow. following Jesus. Wow. So. It's amazing. And throughout that time when you were at the other church, um was did you ever have like an an encounter with god was it there or where did you have your first encounter with god actually um no so that was my my faith my initial faith moment right i'm gonna take a step of faith and i'm gonna follow jesus but my encounter with god my my it was a church in hollywood and at the time christian tabernacle you you know maybe maybe most of you remember uh you know they were leading worship they had the choir there uh, Jason and his, um, you know, Jeff were leading the choir. It was, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was it was off the chains, and so yeah. um, I didn't know who they were. I was a, just a young kid, maybe sixteen at the time, and concert, why not? So I remember just choir members started praying for me, and and that was my encounter as far as the Holy Spirit and as far as speaking in tongues, mm-hmm. and uh, that was my first time actually. Um, and so, um, I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, no, that's amazing because same, like, I think at the age of nine years old, I went to a Coro Tabernaculo concert as well. And I think Jason Aguilar's daughter, you know, I mean, you know, like I said, they're off, they're amazing. They're in a yeah. like, day, I listen to them at least like once a day, like, they're, they're yeah, awesome stuff, you know. And uh, the daughter came down too as well, and and you know she led me into receiving the Holy Ghost. Like like now before I had like cried right at the age of five years old, and like uh, like, but I never spoke in tongues, and that was the first time I ever spoke in tongues. Tongues. It's wow. ridiculous. And I think it's funny because a lot of people that I've spoken to have told me the same thing that it was at a Coro Tabernaculo concert that mm-hmm. they received the Holy mm-hmm. Ghost. So I think that's pretty amazing. That's great. That's yeah. Great. yeah. Let me share that in common. That's that's super funny. Wow, that is think, wow. Yeah. No, that's amazing. Um. So, you know, going forward, 
you know, I, I know, I mean, I know you're heavily involved in ministry and, and, and also, but what was that like defining moment that maybe like pushed you into doing ministry, pushed you into going to Bible college, right? Um, that was around the same time, right after I got the Holy Ghost. I was at another conference in Pittsburgh at Brother Limonis, Elias Limonis' church. Okay, yes. And uh, I think it was called um, Times of Refreshment or something like that. Yeah. And um, the annual conference they have up there. And um, we were there with our church. And I remember walking to the altar. I was there for all three nights. I believe it was three or two nights back then. And um, didn't feel anything. Was, I'd already been there a few times already. But, you know, I would, I just genuinely didn't feel, I mean, you would see people just being touched and, and healed and, and filled with the Holy Spirit. And um, it, it was truly amazing. And so yeah. I, I remember um, I, last night I walked up with our worship director, which is, you know, um, the brother-in-law of your uncle. Oh. Well, he took me to the yeah. altar uh and uh he took me to the altar we were standing there and i didn't feel nothing and i was just praying lord i don't want to move from this place unless you do something i, I we drove all the way to pittsburgh california you know from orange county to it's like a, a nine hour drive wow i, I want to make it work i didn't feel anything during the whole conference and and suddenly the lord began to just break my heart down because for whatever reason i had um I, I was fighting with God during that whole conference about my calling. And I, you know, I had seen so many phenomenal pastors, pastor, but suffer a lot. Yes. Suffer financially, suffer in ministry, suffer. I mean, so much. And I just didn't want to do ministry. But that last night I said, okay, God, I give, I give up. I don't want to live out my life not feeling you not experiencing you in my life. Um, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Mm -hmm. And I'll accept pastor. I'll be an evangelist. I'll be a missionary. <laughs> uh, I'll, 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 I'll be a church, whatever. Um, but I won't pastor. I won't do that. And um, so that's when I felt the call of God in my life. And uh, I began to ask my, 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 my childhood pastor. Um, and, um, I began to ask him, hey, you know, what can I do? Then he began to tell me, um, you know, his son went to to Gateway. I think back in the day it was called Gateway Bible College. Now it's called Urshan College. Okay. And yes. um, and I wanted to go there. Mm -hmm. I was, I mean, I'm, 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 a, I'm, I've never left outside of Orange County. I wanted to go to St. Louis, Missouri. I think it was back then. And yes. and and, but I didn't. Ne I applied. I never received any phone calls. No flyers. Obviously. I felt like it wasn't the will of God, and I ended up um, applying for Christian Life College. Wow, yeah. Uh, you know, and just getting their information. Um, and the rest is history, uh, you know, uh, the, st the story there. So that's how I received my call. It was in Pittsburgh, California, mm -hmm. and I had been fighting with God during that whole conference and until I just gave up. And it's like, kind of got, I'll do anything you want me to. It's and and that, you know, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. No, CLC, CLC colleges, I know it's prestigious within the, the church community and they just recently became accredited, which is even more amazing. Um, exactly. Yeah. Growing up, uh, CLC was like the college, like growing, because, you know, I've always felt the call in my life as well, you know? And uh, I remember growing up, I was like, I'm going to go to CLC college one day, you know, I'm going to go. And I remember we had uh, brother Jesse Mata preach at one of our hands of praise services. And I remember him talking to me about it. And I was like, Oh man, like, that's amazing. You know, I stayed here in San Diego and I went to the local one, but I mean, I know CLC is amazing. And I'm, I, I mean, I know so many men of God within the church that have gone, you know, just, you know, um, mastered their craft, whether it's mm -hmm. preaching or whatever it is, you know what I mean? So winning, but that's super cool. Um, so, you know, in terms of that, like, I know, I know, I know one of the biggest reasons why I want to have you on here is like, you know, explain the Bible college experience, explain like how you start, you know, what you can do, what, what, what it kind of prepares you for as well, you know? Yeah. Um, well, when I went, it was in the, what is it? It was a while ago. It was a few years ago now. Yes. Um, but um, the process is fairly the same. Um, 
and what you're start obviously applying and everything you know they are new now accredited which is phenomenal mm -hmm. it's i believe one of one of the only ones uh outside of urshan mm -hmm. um college mm -hmm. uh, that is fully accredited and uh, they went the hard route which is like a really good accreditation that's right um, huh? and um anyways that being said it's a phenomenal school i, I can say this when i applied they were really good about providing everything that I needed to make my decision. They were blunt. You know, when I went, it wasn't accredited, so they were just completely honest. That, Look, the school's not accredited. You're coming here to be trained for ministry. Now it's now it's still the same, but now they're, it's kind of like a plus. Now it's accredited. So when you leave, you have an option to continue to get your master's anywhere you want. You know, that's right. um, so so as far as I could say this, anybody that's looking into going to Bible college out of high school or wherever they're at in life, um, you have to be 100% sure that's the call of God in your life. Mm -hmm. I was telling this to somebody, and I, I think I've shared it with you. That's right. When we answer the call of God, it doesn't necessarily, you know, um, translate to, I have to go to Bible college. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a uh, you know, I told my wife it, just recently, we were talking and and even my brother-in-law, which has children that are about to graduate high school in a few years, two years away, we all made it, our kids are going to CLC. Mm -hmm. But that's different, right? We want, you know, be, because we want them to um, not only grow up with an education and, and pursue, but because we want them to have a side of we, what we are providing in our home, um, a solid apostolic background, we want them to be exposed to to just everything else as far as ministry goes. Um, CLC changed my life. Wouldn't take it back for for anything. There is there is challenges for people that have graduated uh, with an unaccredited degree, but that doesn't mean that's the end of the road. Um, so what, okay, so my experience was I applied, I went in, I got my bachelor's in in theology, but I did something I kind of. You know, something I guess like, I, I like to consider it smart. I roomed with all music majors. <laughs> so, so what I did was um, I got my theology degree. I knew I wasn't going to be a worship leader, but it wouldn't hurt for me to learn some music, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it came in handy, you know, especially here on Easter. I led worship at our church on Easter Sunday in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, from what I learned from these guys, you know, and being in Bible college and, um, all my roommates that were in, in, in the music program, yes. uh, were from the apostolic assembly. So, so I, you know, uh, I, you know, even though I grew up UPC, you know, I, I learned all these phenomenal old school apostolic, you know, assembly yes. hymns and, yes. and songs yes. that nobody else, you know, that, you know, knew, and it was really cool. And it was one of the most phenomenal moments for my personal life um, and great. will always cherish, you know, uh, personally. Mm -hmm. So Bible college, you have to know God's calling you because I know so many people that have gone and they, and then they do well and they, they graduate, but today they're sitting just in another church pew. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's one of the greatest tragedies. Not, not to say that, that, that they wasted their time. I think that for whatever reason, maybe they're just sitting in a church pew. They're not doing anything. Um, but if you're going to go to Bible college and you're going to answer the call of God in your life, you better do something with it. That's just my, my thought. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't find something to do where you're at, you know, um, you know, well, don't matter if you're, you know, um, <laughs> cleaning the restroom or playing an instrument or picking and being an usher, do something, mm -hmm. you know, you can't, that's just my own two cents on that. Just mm -hmm. serve God in some way, somehow. It doesn't matter what you're doing. No, that's right. That's right. Um, my pastor, we shared a story with, the, I think it was a bishop or a pastor that he was speaking to at a young age group. Uh, I think he heard it in a preaching and he says, there's three things, three things that you have to do to excel in the kingdom of God. And he's like, and this is in Spanish, so he says, la primera cosa es trabajar. And it was like, amen, yes, amen, that's right, right, you gotta work, you know. La segunda cosa es trabajar. <laughs> and it was like, amen, amen, like he already said that, but amen. And he's like, y la tercera cosa es, tra es trabajar. So that's amazing. That's true. You know, being the church, you know, we've got to be working in the kingdom of God. You know, we can't be, like I said, bench warmers. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, um, I don't know. I feel my generation today, there's a lack of motivation within the church for the youth. 
group at least. I know there's a lot of different people out there, you know, um, a lot of different troops out there that have, you know, their, their core youth group, but I know there's a lot of, you know, youth that are unmotivated, you know, and stagnant in a way where they don't want to like, you know, excel within the kingdom of God, you know? Um, so what, what do you think would be your, or what, what do you think would be the reasoning behind that where it kind of stops people from reaching their potential within the church? Um, you could say, honestly, this, um, everybody has their own story. Everybody has their own reasons. Uh, everybody has their own, ex you know, uh, reasonable excuses. Uh, I, I could, I could say this. It's no one has an excuse. <laughs> it's kind of like, I mean, what, whatever hurt or pain we've gone through, whatever, you know, uh, issue we're having, whatever setbacks we're having, it's not that, that, that thing, although may they be very valid, um, you know, I like here or something happened, mm -hmm. I could still serve God and I could still right. make an impact. Uh, today, our, our, our senior pastor, his name is Ronnie Nelson, one of brilliant man. Uh, he said, he said, today, our local church mm -hmm. is having more Bible studies, is having more baptisms, mm -hmm. is reaching more souls, Amen. you know, um, today than we were when we started the year. And, and the church has left the building, you know, we left the building and, and it's like, now it's sink or swim. And that's what I'm sure. trying to get at. It's like, it's, you're either going to do something for God or you're not. And it just no excuse not to, um, you know, although very valid, whatever people, traumas or experiences, not trying to play down on that, trying to just get people, okay, let's get back on the main thing. Let's focus on Jesus. Let's focus on the gospel. Let's mm -hmm. focus on getting souls baptized and saved and, and helping them find Jesus. And um, I don't know. I don't know if that answers, answers yes, that question. No, that's perfectly fine. No, you're right. You're right. Um, yeah, I just feel like I have that burden in a way for my generation as I, I feel, you know, we see it, you know, we see it in youth camps, see it in church services and church and, and whatnot. But I mean, you know, a uh, little by little, but I know that this huge thing, you know, with coronavirus is probably uh, mo uh, another motivator, you know, for all that stuff. Like I know exactly it's lives are going to be transformed once you go back, you know, exactly. And, and you know what, it, 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 this is, this is something very unique. It just kind of um, sparked this in my head is, mm -hmm. is, um, People will always have a reason why not to serve God. That's right. People will always give you a list of like, you know, or why I can't, you know, be a soul winner. You know, um, as far as our generation, whatever generation, my generation, past generations, future generations, we will always naturally look for the spotlight. That's right. And so we will always be trampled by that idea um what's it called uh consciously or unconsciously mm -hmm. and if i'm not getting the glory if i'm not being recognized then i don't want to do it that's true right that's true and um i think we need to learn to be servants in in front of the crowd and behind the stage we need to serve god like your pastor said work work, work you know work. no matter just just work man yes and uh, just i mean reasons i can sit here and tell you well I think this is why, and I think that's why our generation is struggling. And, and you know, I, I can, we can all, you know, give philosophies of the reasons to the end. At the end of the day, I think Bishop Haney, Kenneth yeah. Haney, said this to Luami Diaz one day. He said, um, one of the greatest travesties that we will ever face is people giving me um problems without a solution wow. i'm paraphrasing i'm paraphrasing that's amazing problems yeah. without a solution oh you know pastor you know uh, uh we have this problem and what we're gonna do is, uh, okay. well you tell me what we're gonna do you know uh mm -hmm. he, and he would always tell you know and norma was telling his story he was saying you know people people would always go up to him hey, we have this problem well give me the solution i already know you have a problem Okay, well, give me give me the solution to the problem. That's great. And That's great. I mean, it's easy. Just sit down, pray, talk to God, figure it out in prayer. Fast if you have to. Do whatever you have to do, mm -hmm. and just begin to allow God to give you an answer to the solution. That's so right. I'm big on that. We You're will right. always have reasons why not to serve God. Just find a solution. You're right. You're right. And you know That's what? It. That's a military answer. I was at a funeral. 
and one of our one of the, our, our local worship leaders he he works at uh, he's in he's a navy he's he's in the navy, and uh, you know one of the bishops well he was a bishop at the time, and he comes in and I'm like I'm like bro like there's darn near more seats in the front and they had reserved a seat but one of the family members sat there, and uh, we're like dude what do we do and he's like do you want to hear uh, do you want to hear the military answer or do you want to hear like a like a baby answer I'm like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give me the military answer. He's like, figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. So I don't know how we did it, but we got the bishop to sit in the front, right, at the funeral. But that's it just sparked that memory in my mind as well. You know, you got to figure it out. That's true. That's true. Uh, I think it's hilarious. But, you know, uh, you know, with that being said, the work of God, right, the Great Commission. And I know, and a little birdie told me that you actually, you know, were, I think you, you did some missionary work, no? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You want to speak a little bit on that and how that how that was? And this is why Bible college is so important. I, if I wouldn't have, have gone to Bible college, I wouldn't have had these opportunities that I had. So if there's ever been a time to be in I my my old alma mater, which is CLC, it's mm -hmm. this hour. Um, mm -hmm. The church needs competent, equipped ministers of the gospel. That's right. Um, I'm, I want to make a paraphrase here. I had, a, uh, I had an instructor before I answer the mission work uh, question. He told us this. I remember we all walked in into his Greek class. We were taking Greek, how to read the New Testament. And a genius, brilliant man um, was a you know, degree in physics and you know, was in a, a professor at Berkeley besides being a professor at CLC. Mm -hmm. um, and he, I remember we walked in to take that test. We all took it with confidence. He walked out, came back the next day, and he looked at us, and he just kind of threw the papers on his desk, and he said, everybody failed. And we're all just kind of laughing, like, okay, cool, yeah, yeah funny joke. No, you guys, you guys, everybody failed. <laughs> and I don't know what happened to, to us as a class that day. You know, um, we failed that test, totally, totally bombed our intro, intro to Greek class. Yes. And obviously, no one, no, one, no one studied, so that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but he said the following words that to, to this day they stuck. My responsibility as a teacher mm -hmm. in the body of Christ is to, to make sure to get rid of the idiots that think that they want to preach and preach. Uh, and he was strong. He was like, and, and preach nonsense behind the pulpit because they don't take enough time to take this gospel serious. Wow. And that, obviously, that was the last time we ever failed it, any of his exams. Yes. Um, we need to take this gospel serious. That's right. Um, presenting the gospel off the pulpit and on the pulpit. 10% mm -hmm. of what you do in ministry is, be, is behind a pulpit. That's right. 10% or less. Mm -hmm. 90, 95% of your ministry is how you treat people and how you love on people. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Oh, wow. um, it's, it's, you know, uh, that's, that's just the truth. So that being said, when I went to Bible college, they said, Hey, we're going on a mission trip to, I think we went to, we went to El Salvador one time, life changing moment. we, Pray for demon possessed people, man. We prayed for, you know, it is talking about huge conferences. Yes. Um, people being delivered, people walking out of wheelchairs. I mean, just miracles and, and, wow. and just, I mean, it was amazing. Uh, that was my first experience in Mission Field. Um, worked in, since the moment we arrived, we hit the floor running, went to the hotel, dropped our luggage out, and went out to like in the middle of nowhere to preach. Wow. And uh, one of the moments, one of the most funny and, and yet surreal moments, we're in the mission field. We are going through the, through the jungle, bro. It, at least it felt like it. I grew up in big city, Orange County, right? Yes. Um, so we're going through the jungle, mm -hmm. and out of nowhere, there's a KFC. <laughs> and so obviously, as Americans, we were on our way to preach to this church on the top of this mountain. So we're like, okay, we're going to grab lunch here because we're in the middle of nowhere and there's this little town with this KFC. So we stopped and we ate American food. And um, so as we're, we're there, everybody gets off. Yes. We come out. 
we get robbed. Oof. So our Bibles, no. our guitars, our extra clothes, because everybody's wearing T-shirts and like, sh you know, um, yeah. jeans and, and, you know, we're not ready for church. Yeah. So anyways, we get to the base of this mountain and the missionary tells us, okay, guys, the church is up there. And we're like, okay, cool. Like, we're thinking, okay, it's probably like a 15-minute walk. It turned out to be a two-hour hike oh my God. to get to the church. Mind you this, I have a T-shirt <laughs> that I bought in El, in el Centro del Salvador. Wow. You know, so people were selling stuff. So, you know, you're trying to help out. Mm -hmm. That had a little walking man. I think it had a, a, a walking man that are on here on the square yeah. and it was going to um, walking from, I believe from El, El Salvador and then it went off to Mexico and then it went off to, to the US, you know? So I had to go, you know, with this, this, this kind of graphic, <laughs> get to the, to the church and I had to preach. <laughs> you know, uh, at the uh, you know, with this weird shirt on, yes. you know, they had this walking stick man, you know, um, you know, on my shirt. And so I thought that was funny, you know, but that's hilarious. It was a phenomenal church service. It was a phenomenal. I mean, pe people got the Holy Ghost and Great. people were healed. Uh, there was a blind guy there that was healed he was blind from one, one eye. And wow. And so um, people didn't care. People knew we were just robbed, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so they were just glad and so happy we were there. And. Um, that was the first time. Then we went to Veracruz, Mexico, ended up going there with um, one of the Drost siblings. Um, I don't think he's no longer in Mexico. I think he's in Texas now, but um, it, it was phenomenal, life-changing, life-changing moments, mission field, and even traveling the U.S. I mean, we spent the summer traveling all the U.S. just preaching service wow. after service, and those are experiences that I would have never received if it weren't for Bible college. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge i mean that's amazing that's amazing i've always wanted to go to into missionary you know field but we do something because i know the assembly we have a lot of different opportunities you all just haven't been able to you know, go but i mean i'm that sounds very wholesome sounds very you know humbling experience and you know this reminds me of uh one of the one of the reverends here in the assembly uh mingo i don't know if you know uh brother mingo and i know mm -hmm. he does a lot of that he goes to india he goes to all these different these different places you know you know full-on missionary work and uh, I, I know that is, uh, you know, his, when he preaches a lot, he likes to roast us sometimes. It's super funny. He's funny. Mm. He'll be like, he'll be like, I can, I can count your chains through your pants. It's how skinny they are. The funny <laughs> guy. Funny guy. Oh, but, man. Uh, one of the things why he preaches a lot about, you know, taking, taking it serious is because he's been to these places and he sees, he has a different perspective on the gospel and just how a church service must be, right? Mm. Um, rather than that. So how, on, on, you know, from you going to these experiences, what, what's like the differences? What are the similarities? And what do you think maybe we, you know, take for granted that they don't, that, that, that they don't have, you know? So there's this gap when you arrive back from the mission field. Mm -hmm. There is this sense of you poured yourself on the mission field, right? I would imagine everybody that would go on the mission field, you would pour yourself on the mission field. Praying people through every night, preaching, you know, whatever, playing music, whatever it is. Yes. Uh, painting Bible colleges, whatever it is that, that people do, right? Yes. Um, when you get back, there is this, this, this brief moment that you have to readjust to the American way. Um, and it's very surreal to realize how, you know, you ask yourself, why is it that thousands of people get the Holy Ghost in third world countries or second, you know, whatever it is, Salvador or Mexico, mm -hmm. um, and these small little towns in this mountainous areas like crazy. You don't even have to get close to them to pray them. They just... You, they, you know, you're close to them and it's, it's, they get the Holy Ghost versus here. You have to like stand with people for like 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, even an hour. I've seen people stand with people for hours to pray them through the Holy Ghost. And, um, it's this idea and very simple way, I guess I would put it that I, 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 I have other things in case Jesus doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. And these places like, like Mexico, El Salvador, Africa, my last, you know, solution is Jesus. Mm -hmm. that, that's it. Like, I have nothing else to hang on to. And so these people are having revival because Jesus is the only solution they have. Wow. 
you know, people are praying they're getting healed because that's that's it. That there's no there's no doctor, mm -hmm. there, there's no like um, um, medicine. There's no I'm gonna go make an appointment on on Kaiser.com to like <laughs> you know check if I have whatever I got going on. Um, it's like no. Right. There's this preacher. There's this man of God. There's this woman of God. There's there's these people and and <laughs> that's it. You know, and they'll they'll come up and. They need prayer and they believe it, man. They just, you know, versus here, it's like, okay, but if I, if I, if they pray for me and if I, you know, mm -hmm. it's, I think that's what it is. It's, mm -hmm. you got so many things to hold on, so many strings that pull at you that at the end of the day, if Jesus doesn't make me feel the way I need to feel, then, then I'll, I got all these other answers. You're right. You're right. No, that's, that reminds me of a, of a preaching that I heard one time and it's that we're comfortable, you know? We're comfortable generation well we're comfortable here in the u.s that being said you know we know we know who are the best preachers you know we know who are the best worship leaders mm -hmm. the best musicians the best churches you know we know how long the service should be you know from uh seven o'clock to maybe eight thirty or nine o'clock you know we are we're so exactly. happy with these, you know um uh just just a way of like church that we've grown up to you know what i mean i mean i remember growing up um you know back in la because i was born in i was born in uh in, in Bell, while well, I was living in Bell, and uh, our church was in Watts. So again, like you, I, I saw the ghetto. Like we had, you know, drug addicts, you know, drug dealers, uh, you know, single mothers with abusive husbands, or or, or mothers with abusive hu husbands coming to the church, you know, from the city of Jesus. And we'd have revival there, you know, at a, you know, we'd have, uh, what is it called, uh, a, like the sunrise service, right, from five to like uh, seven o'clock or six to seven o'clock, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, or, or eight o'clock, and then we have you know the, the morning classes, uh, Escuela Dominical, right? And then after that, you know, we have a little break, right? We go eat at the kitchen, and then we have service from like two o'clock to like nine o'clock at night. So I know during those times it was a little more different, like we didn't have structure and whatnot. And those are like the moments in my life that I even I still remember to this day. You know what I mean? That God, God, you know, touched me at that young age. Um, and it's just so crazy to see the difference between that and now, you know what I mean? Like it's, you know, two hours and it's fine. You know, I love having structure, you know, where we serve God of order, but you know, sometimes after a while, when you get too accustomed to it and we're like, oh man, dude, it's like two hours and 30 minutes of pastors preaching for like, you know, he's, he's going over 40 minutes, man. Like I'm already <laughs> thinking, you know, we're already thinking about Denny's, you know? Um, hey, so, yeah, I really want to go. I really want to go to one of these missionary churches and just see that different perspective, you know, um, you know, from your experiences going to like, you know, the mission and fields and whatnot, what was the difference between the youth over there? How were they, you know, in the, in the service? Um, I think there was, this, I mean, from the people I, I, I encountered were tend to be more humble, uh, at least, you know, talking about, you know, because even, okay. So, so if you go to the country, we're talking about countryside, right? Or somewhat third of a third country. That's right. Um, because even even in these places, El Salvador and Mexico, they have these huge cities where they have pretty well off people. You know, um, they very uh, they live similar, somewhat lives than most people in the U.S. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but that being said, we're talking about people that that is just that the only they have is Jesus. Um, humble people, you know, it's you know some of the most craziest musicians you ever like meet, right? Um, there, it's like they have probably I don't know. Um, <laughs> Some of the most just amazing musicians you meet, you know, really humbling, um, really nice, really kind. Um, there's no, there's no uh, sense of like, well, this is pastor so and so, and that's pastor so and so, and and come to this conference because pastor so and so is come. Like it's yeah. just no, I just want to have a move of God, and I don't just want to serve God. So right. you know, young people, as far as that, I, them, you know, my experience is just they're just hungry for God. No one, no one really cares who you are. No one cares, you know. They just want to, they just want to have an encounter with God. Wow. And so, um, that's as far as young people that I experience, hardworking, uh, in love with Jesus. And I imagine they're the same struggles that they go through is the same struggles that most anywhere, anywhere you would imagine, just different. You know, right. struggles right. are different, but you know, same as far as a young person growing up, um, you know, living, trying to live for God. So, that's right. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. You know, we're going to come to a close here, but, you know, I just want to, you know, give you this time to give your last thoughts, your last words, you know, kind of motivate the young people to, you know, answer the call of God, whether it's going to Bible college or just serving at a local church or going to missionary field, you know. So if you just, whatever you have, whatever God has put in your heart, you know, right now is the time to say it. 
Yeah, man. Um, thank you, first of all, for this opportunity, bro. Um, I'll, I'll tell you this. Answering the call of God is never going to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be this life of, of um, I would just say, of glamour and, and spotlights. And um, it's a lot of it's done, 95% of it's done behind the scenes mm -hmm. um, in your prayer life in your dedication, your consecration. Um, that's where you are made. Um, you, you could, you know, I've met great preachers, great, great preachers, but today they're not doing anything. They're not serving God. I mean, you can give them a paper clip, bro, and they can preach. They can pray people through with just that paper clip. <laughs> that's how good of preachers they are. Mm -hmm. But today it's like they're, they're not, I mean, they never consecrated their life to the Lord. They never lived a prayer life. They never walked with the Lord. And it was all about the glamour. And so I would just say, build a prayer life. Build a life of fasting. Build a life of consecration. Build a life of holiness. Um, you know, um, get close to God. You know, learn to what it means to wash, you know, or clean the, the church mop and pick up trash and mm -hmm and serve the the church and sure serve the people and you know you would imagine how can i how can i serve the church during teach a bible study man go on zoom That's go right. on these things you know uh on, on facetime and you know chat with somebody you know we have the technology go teach a bible study if you are wanting to answer the call of god go win a soul <laughs> if you are preaching behind a pulpit and you've never discipled or you've never taught somebody a Bible, you've never prayed with anybody through the Holy Ghost, you never, you know, help people get baptized, you, you're, you are taking one step ahead of yourself. Mm -hmm. Go back, learn how to pick up a mop when you're back in church, learn how to get on these applications and find somebody in your high school, in your college. I guarantee you, right now, in your contacts, you can go through it and you can find somebody that can, you know, I need Jesus and I, I need him right now. And you'll be, by the end of this week, I guarantee you, you your pastor, your leadership, your church is going to be baptizing them in the Jesus name. Um, simple as that. Um, if you desire the pulpit before you desire loving souls, you got it wrong. Mm -hmm. Like this, just quit. It's not about that. Uh, but if it, you desire serving people, loving people, spending time, you know, helping people, then, then you got it right. That's, that's what right. I would say. That's right. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, you know what? Thank you so much for, you know, coming on this live with me. You know, I know this is going to be the last time, you know, after this coronavirus season is over, I'm sure I want to, you know, go, you know, hopefully go to your house one of these days and just record, yeah. right? you know, have more time. I know the Instagram kind of cuts us off at, at a certain point. I don't know why, what time. Well, thank God it's been going on for a long time. But uh, <laughs> thanks so much again, Pastor Eddie. And, you know, hopefully we can do this again, right? For we'll sure. You guys as well. But um, everybody, that was Pastor Eddie for us. You know, we're going to be, you know, sharing this on YouTube pretty soon as well. I'll be posting this one. But again, guys, you know, just really think about what Pastor Eddie was talking about. And, uh, you know, let's answer the call of God. You know, how he said it might be hard at times. You know, and this, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's never going to be easy. And we have all these millions of excuses. But, you know, what? let's just be faithful. You know, let's trust in the Lord with all of our hearts, right? And lean on our own understanding. And, you know, God's going to, you know, acknowledge that. And, and, and as we acknowledge him, and he's going to direct us into the, you know, the way that, that he wants to take us, right? So, Again, thanks so much, Pastor Eddie. Uh, you know, have a good night. I know you have kids and a wife and, and whatnot, but, you know, uh, we, we, we will be praying for you guys and, you know, your church during this coronavirus season. But, uh, you know, this won't be the last time. God bless, my friend. Thank God you. Bless you. God bless Take you. Care. So, guys, I hope Pastor Eddie spoke, you know, um, was a great, 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 um, you know, uh, great, great, these great words. Um, hope you touched your life. And, uh, you know, keep an eye out. I'm going to be posting um, – this interview soon on YouTube, um, you know, share to your friends, share to your mother, share to your parents, share to whoever you guys want, please share it around because I know that these words are not in vain. And these words will, will motivate somebody to do some, something in the kingdom of God. So guys, again, um, keep on supporting me, my YouTube channel. I'm going to be posting soon. Um, you guys missed my last interview with Juana Salas, um, you know, young lady, which she's going to be the next president of the United States of America. And I know that I know that for a fact. 
um, you know, she's in the political, the political sphere and this political, um, you know, um, uh, she works within politics, but she's also solid. So guys, I'm going to, you know, post that, go check that out. But guys, that's been, uh, that's enough for me. Uh, again, thanks so much, Pastor Eddie. This is amazing. Um, Cesar Perez, GQ, miss you, miss you, miss you. Hey, hey, we'll have Cesar Perez on here pretty soon too. I, 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 I decree it right now in the name of Jesus. No, but I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. But uh, have a good night. Have a good night. Guys, again, if you guys have any people that you want me to interview or, you know, want me to have on here on this live, just let me know. I'll uh, reach out to them and, you know, we can all, we can all learn something um, great. But this has been the link up and thank you guys for thank you guys for joining us. God bless you guys. Have a good night.